Hello and welcome to another episode of Dave Trippin Couch Therapy where I do question and answer about living in Japan, cultural stuff like that. And I've gotten a big backlog of emails and so I'm going through those and I'm answering the emails and I think I might even break my rule this week and do a couple of these and do more than two videos to uh, try and put a personal touch on these as opposed to just answering them via the internet. So let's get into this one. Hey Dave, like many others I aspire to teach English in Japan. I've seen your videos and believe I'm ready to start looking for a good company to work under. The only problem is I'm just starting college. I know, know that you mentioned in a video that you have a degree pointed towards teaching. Uh, a degree pointed towards teaching would help, but if you don't mind me asking, what did you major in, get your degree in? Would committing to a teaching degree vastly increase my chances? Would I still be able to teach if my degree was in a different field? Just curious what you decided on majoring in so that teaching in Japan would be possible. Thank you. Regards. Uh, this is from Kareem. So, this is a good question. It's, it's like, um, how do I plan for teaching in Japan and should I do so from my base education? Like, is there a better major or something uh, to do? And before, when I, would, when I would answer this question, I would have said actually that it doesn't matter because I was thinking about it sort of, uh, we'll say, horizontally speaking, or like just way too close-minded, uh, where I would have said that because the only requirements to teach here are that you would have a degree and that would get you into whatever company that you don't really need to obsess over these kind of details. Uh, you might even go even farther to say that don't even be terribly concerned with your grades because once you have the degree, they don't care what your grades are. But this is something I've definitely had some time to think over and sort of evolve my thinking on since I've been here and seen the sort of goals that I want to have for the future beyond just getting in to teach here because I, I think I can offer sort of, uh, call it a treasure map, <laughs> uh, to how you might evolve this beyond once you initially arrive and more than just getting a job that pays you a little bit more money than once you're here. What I think is that if you're really, really passionate about teaching in Japan and teaching in general, then of course, if you can go through and get a licensed teaching degree, that you should go ahead and do that. Because if you have a licensed teaching degree, then you can, without even a master's degree, in many cases, you're able to teach in Japanese universities. And you can make tons of cash. And once you have a language ability that's high enough, you can do very, very well, so on, so forth. So that's like the really obvious advice that I would give for somebody coming over that is now amended from saying, ah, oh, who cares, get whatever degree, do this or do that. If you're really passionate about the teaching, for sure, get, get, a, get a teaching degree, get one that, uh, is deal specifically in TESOL if you want to do that even. But go ahead and go for that, shoot for that higher level. Now that said, some people are thinking of coming over to, to teach here and they're wondering, oh, what specific degree should I get? Well, I would say then it's actually, now it kind of returns to what I would have said before, which is that it's not necessarily in my mind what degree that you get because if you're gonna make it all about teaching, then you get the teaching degree. If you're not gonna do that, but you want to have that eye towards the future, you want to evolve what it is that you're going to do once you're here, then more so than the degree that you choose, because anyone will get you hired here at one of these base companies, really, really care about your grades and having something that if you want to return to school again, and get something like a master's that you'll make it way easier for yourself if you do a really good job academically in your BA. So I'm at a point right now where I want to continue in Japan, I want to evolve my career here, and that would mean going on to A, get my language ability up, I'm gonna study a bunch tonight, and B, that I would get a master's degree. But I don't want to say through no fault of my own, I would say actually through every fault of my own, I didn't do well enough getting my BA that my GPA is, I would, it's quite low. It's not that good. Granted, when you get 
a master's degree, they're looking at a hell of a lot more than just what your GPA is. And the fact that I have many years teaching experience and good references and this and that, and maybe some other things is really good. But the most basic thing that you can do for yourself to increase the chances of being granted entry into a master's program is to have a better GPA. Uh, so where I think a lot of people feel like when they enter into their, their college, their university careers, they're like, I've made it, this will get me the job afterwards, I don't really need to stress quite so much. There's a whole demographic that still do and they'll do great and they're the people who are getting accepted in droves into master's programs. I'm not one of them. I just, I want to make this reminder for people who think that maybe that's the end of the road for their career or their academic career or the sort of impact that how they're doing in that moment will have. Where I sort of had that, I was like, oh, I'm probably not going on to a master's or something and sidetracked by many other things. And now I'm sure with perseverance I could get in, but if looking back on it, if I could give some advice to someone, I would say, really, really care about it and see it is, even when you're getting that BA is the next stepping stone. So what you are doing by doing that, choosing whatever degree it is, it's that when you come to Japan and you make that choice without the teaching degree specifically, but you want to evolve your career, that if you want to do a master's program, that you'll more readily be able to do so. And one of the things that you can do, and it's becoming more and more popular, and I would say since this is directed at people, this video specifically is directed at people who are going to, they're going through university now, and so that's probably three, four years, whatever it is, out from when they'll finish, where doing a distance education master's is acceptable now. It's only going to growingly, increasingly be the case that these are accepted. And so the idea of getting here into Japan, uh, working in a job that's really fulfilling, that you enjoy, building experience that gives you entry into a master's program much more easily, then doing a distance education thing is going to get more and more popular where that was one of the common questions I had when I said that I was going to do it was, oh, so you're going to return to Canada? And it was, I said, no, not at all, actually. I found a number of different universities that do distance education that would allow me to still work full time, do my master's degree, and then move on. And we're going to talk like far, far into the future then uh, where if you get that master's degree in whatever it is that you're going to do, if you have it in a TESOL or something education, then it's going to be super easy to get into a teaching position here at a university. Not every university requires it, but I think good ones do. Um, or you need to be an absolute master of the language. Once you get a teaching position at a university, and you're building that onto your resume, since why not talk about the longer, longer term? We're, we're here, so why not anyways? Once you have that, then as soon as you have your language ability up, you have every single door open up to you here in Japan. And there's strengths and weaknesses to the different economic models that every country works on. You might say in the West, it's really, really cool that when you do this sort of, you, you, what you work on is what you will do. So if you are a mechanical engineer, then you're going to do mechanical engineering. Far more so in Japan, I find that it's less that you specifically do what it is that you were involved with, more that you've proven a certain level of ability that you can then do a variety of different things. For example, I know people who have, with a master's degree, totally unrelated to the field of marketing, had great language ability and then been putting, put in the marketing department of some Japanese companies. And so that's what I'm saying is if you, if you really want to think about like not just teaching but sort of a, a longer term life in Japan, think about it that you want to get that fantastic bachelor's. You want to like make it the shiniest, most polished, extracurricular, beautiful thing that you've ever done. Um, then once you get to Japan, you're building up uh, a great resume of work experience once you're here. You're really killing it with the language. And then you can either move into a university or do a distance master's education that would then unlock so many, you know, locks <laughs> and uh, doors here while you're in Japan that you would, you would have fantastic career opportunities, especially like approaching the Olympics, Olympics post-Olympics. Japan, I think, will be fundamentally changed. 
countries are, I believe, uh, post Olympics more and more and more when these sort of globalized activities occur in the country, do they have a greater impact? Because I'll go on a little bit more of a tangent here where when you had a globalized activity occurring before, it was like on closed circuit television where when you have globalized activities occurring now, they're everywhere. And by the time the Olympics occurs in 2020, they'll be rolling out 5G uh, internet in a number of different countries. It's really, really interesting. And 5G internet is, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but it is relevant to the impact this can have on our careers later, is it's about 50 to 60 times faster data transfer than we currently have. Now imagine a globalized event and the sharing of that experience around the world that's done so at 50 to 60 times the current data rate that occurs now. The impact of that event is so much more significant. And so Japan will be a very different place. It'll be a very different place for career opportunities afterwards, all these different things. And so let's line it up at the end of the video here. If you're a diehard teacher, then definitely get that, get that teaching certificate. How does the degree matter, like what particular major you have outside of it? It doesn't really, but your grades really do. So really make an effort to have fantastic grades to do all that stuff that would get you a good GPA. When you're here in Japan building experience, then if you would like to, at least that door to a master's degree is not bolted shut or with you know an incredible barrier of entry to you. Then once you have the master's degree, it really becomes, our, our lives could go at that point in so many different directions that you don't even know. I mean, that's, that's how I'm kind of trying to look at my own life, or I, I think it's very obviously true, if I've got my eyes open to it, that I have this sort of trajectory that I want, but probably along the way, if I continue to excel, there'll be other opportunities I didn't even dream of. Uh, I'm, I'm quite fond of saying how that's something that's really resulted from doing YouTube, the sort of people and uh, connections and interesting experiences I've had. It's a lot of the stuff that you never could have predicted, but because you're kicking ass and taking names along the way, that's why it occurs. Uh, so those are my thoughts on uh, how you can prepare an education for teaching in Japan, but then maybe your career as it continues afterwards, be that teaching or something else. I would love to know in the comments down below, what is your approach? Like, because that's mine, <laughs> but this is a discussion, obviously. There's probably people who are like, well, I did this and I did this, which will end me up with this, uh, which could then lead to there being a whole treasure trove of information for people who want different career path options to be found in the comments down below, as, a sort of, as opposed to a sort of toxic cesspool of negativity that can so often happen there. <laughs> Please do like the video. If you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel. And please do hit that bell notification so you'll be able to receive notifications when the new videos are going up on the channel. Please do check out my Patreon if that's something that interests you and you'd like to support the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Follow me on all the social media that I put down below. Got an awesome video planned. I'm hyping it up for this Saturday where I went to Nico with my friend and I'm gonna work on that all week. So it's shiny, beautiful, shiny chrome um, awaited in Valhalla for Saturday. All right, thanks so much for watching this one, guys. I really appreciate the views, the likes, the interaction, everything. Catch you in the next one. Peace.